Okay, hello everybody. Can you hear us? That was in the studio. That's bad. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yes. Hello. Is it okay like this? With the Okay, welcome back to the second half of our today's workshop. So we have had a very nice start this morning. Um, I think we already got two very interesting um, presentations. Uh, we got a very nice lunch. Thank you for inviting us. That's great. Um, now we go, we're going to go directly into the second half of our today's program. Uh, and you might notice that I actually updated the uh, schedule. So we have um, the presentation next from Desi, from Levash Kvaratskir. Uh, yeah. Prost. Um, <laughs> Who's our colleague from Trocha <clears throat> and who um, couldn't make it this morning because of uh, some issues at the border crossing? Um, so, we are very happy that you are now here, um, Risi, and maybe you can, before you start, um, introduce yourself. But before we start with your presentation, um, I briefly wanted to um, come back to Darius' presentation because I think you were not really ready with the discussion, and I wanted to ask if there's anything else that. Um, I think Nesibe, um, you were asking something and you were interrupted, so we couldn't really hear your question or your comments. Um, I don't know if you want to follow up on this. Uh, Leah, we, we can continue. Maybe uh, the last discussion uh, we can add more. Okay, so you mean we continue with the uh, next presentation and we discuss later? Okay. All right, so um, the, we keep those things in mind, and we're going to have time later um, after the presentations to come back to this. All right, um, then, Risi, I would like to uh, um, come to your presentation. Uh, maybe you can briefly introduce yourself, because we all did this um, in the morning. Mm -hmm. So now you don't know who we are, but we want to know who you are. <laughs> Uh, but you can come to the front and um, take over okay. from this point. Should I stand there? Yes. <laughs> uh, maybe you can stand here because then you can. Sizde de bağlantı gitti mi hocam? Gitti yazdım çünkü connection gitti diye. Evet. Neyse ya onlar takılsınlar olmadı ne yapalım? Yani yapacak bir şey yok. Neden böyle bir connection ile ilgili problem oluyor anlamadım orada. Bilmiyorum. <gülüyor> Mehmet öyleyim. Kapatalım sesi tamam.
Tunçay, Alper'i bilgilendirdim ama bozma. Yoksa çok sarkar toplantı dedim. Tamam hocam. Biz herhalde nasıl bir şey o zaman biz bunun içinde değiliz. Ya biz kalalım böyle. Ee, tamam. Bir şey gelirse konuşuruz. Çıkmayalım. Tamam hocam.
We don't need video here, right? What do you work? Oh, <laughs> what else can go wrong? Ah. So now we need this. Uh, and we need this is pressing. And we need the camera as well. Yeah. And I don't have any more lights. So I only have one more one more connector. This is going where? Oh, this is already connected. So I need a mouse connect. Don't leave the mouse there and just the thing over here. I said you resist. Do you have a power plug? A what? Power? You need power? No, I think. Yeah, I got a power Mm, it wasn't sent yet. Oh. Why is this doing? Keep sent. Hey guys, we can hear you now. Are you? Yeah. We can hear you now. You can? Yeah, yeah, we can. Great. Uh, we're trying to get the presentation up. Okay, okay. Uh, no, he has to share from his Zoom. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, wait. Doesn't that Oh, what? Okay. I thought they didn't have a. Oh, sorry. Why is doing that? No way. See, no, it, it wasn't sent, I think. Can you put it in a USB drive? Maybe it's yours. It is in my sent email. Uh, yeah, I can put it in. Do you have any? They're all gone. <laughs> Dario? Yes. Uh, oh, if, if the problem is uh, the sharing with us, uh, you can continue without us because if it takes more time, uh, it will be very, uh, how can I say, bad for you, for the people there. Uh, we We're can drinking coffee and eating cookies here, so it's not. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh yeah. Okay, okay, we will be wait. <laughs> I get the video up. You you enjoy your time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I see you now. At least some At entertainment. Least. Some entertainment. Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, so, Rebas, should I get Rupes as well? 
Okay, can do that later. Uh, okay. Slow process. Do you want to try the wire? Um, I think it's <laughs> seems, I don't know how it's working, but it seems to be working except for the downloading. Uh, why is this going so slow? I mean, that has nothing. Program? Yeah. I mean, we could do it from the USB drive, but it's going to cause some problems. Yes. But it's going to cause some problems. Maybe that's No, it was not. It was TV. All right. So uh, we. Share screen. Hmm? Oh, Dario. <laughs> yes. But it just is a bit tricky, and then uh, Dario has to. Okay. Is this working? Yes. Can you see the slides? Mm -hmm. Yes. Ooh, let's celebrate. Yes, perfect. Sorry, <laughs> interruption. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'll try to continue. Uh, this is uh, this thing. <laughs> really? What's okay, okay. okay, again. I think it's still there online, but not here. Sometimes. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> breathes. Uh, uh, this is the, my country, uh, Georgia, and then my sub uh, site is uh, located in the North Caucasus mountains. Mm -hmm. Uh, the elevation is uh, about the 1,000 1, meters. Uh, so, meter. oh, this is what your guys are seeing. Uh, this place is the quite unique. It's a uh, only remaining uh, the nature of uh, uh, forest. That's a forest that uh, is dominated by the Tarsus Bagada, and there is a 470 hectares of uh, this kind of forest still remaining. Uh, there, and uh, that's why I chose this area as my uh, study area. Sorry, can again. Give them another minute. There? Is it better now? No, you can still. No problem. No, uh, why? There? Better? Yes? Is it okay? Is it just independent from the rest of the world? Uh, for the something I did the standard anthropological uh, procedures. I did uh, I for uh, 27, 27 trees in total, and uh, I was uh, trying to get the um, two samples from each tree. Uh, I used the, the regular borer. I think I will not bother you the information that how how I did uh, the sampling. Also, this is also the part of the, the standard dendrochronological work. Uh, I just put the the bores on the wooden piece, and then uh, I use the the microtome to clean the surface to increase the visibility of the rings. And uh, sometimes I was using the sandpapers. Uh, I use the uh, for the data, for the ring countings and the, the measurements of the small growth, I use the uh, C-dendro and the core recorder, and uh, I use the dendro to build the, uh, the average, uh, the master chronology uh, from the samples. Uh, as a um, as a result that uh, I got was like a, the master chronology uh, that was built by the 50, 50 board course from the 27 uh, tree, living, living trees. Uh, and the oldest, uh, oldest tree was uh, 445 uh, years old that I could um, get from the from the board, board because uh, trees was like maybe two and three times bigger, uh, but there always the, there was hollow inside. Uh, and uh, also we figure out that uh, the average growth of the of 
battery is 0 0.58 uh, millimeter. Uh, it's uh, three times uh, less than its average growth in Europe, for example. Uh, it can be the some reason that the trees are, uh, that can be the indication also the trees are super old. Mm, uh, to check to check the quality of my of my chronology, I use the the program uh, uh Copeta, uh and uh, uh also I had a lot of problems with the breaking parts and uh, I, I almost three or four months I just spent to working with uh Copeta and uh, the finally I had the the average uh, correlation between uh samples uh, the thirty eight and uh, it's uh, it was considered as a normal uh, average for correlation in the northern hemisphere. Uh, and uh, also to for the, the my final uh, aim was to to um, to do a climate reconstruction and uh, that's very important to remove uh, the other trends that influence the tree growth. Uh, for that, I used the uh, the program. Uh, I used the uh, Arstan to did the to do the uh, detrending of the samples to remove the all other trends that uh, also influences the tree growth. Uh, and uh, to yeah, when when I did the detrending of my chronology, uh, then I used the program uh, Cisco. Uh, that's made by the David Meko or from Arizona. Uh, in this, uh, I had the climate data for on unfortunately only for thirty two uh, two years. And uh, in this program, uh, you can see the correlation on the upper part. You see the correlation, the monthly and the seasonal one month and the seasonal uh, correlations of the tree growth and the uh, annual uh, the uh, tree growth and the. Uh, Trigo rose index and the uh, the temperature and the precipitation separately. On the down part also you see the uh, that's what partial partial correlation correlation it uh, shows that how the correlation between the temperature and uh, the tree grows is influenced by the uh, precipitation on white or vice versa. And uh, as you see, I had the, the highest correlation. I got the in a six six month season. It showed um, six month season. This the period from the October to March. Uh, I, uh, the results showed that when we have the warm period from average warm temperature during the October of March, we have highest uh, growth highest growth years. And also uh, the interesting part was the one uh, with a one month season. We saw also the negative correlation with a with a June June uh, temp the higher uh, temperature in the June uh, that reduces the tree growth uh, during the year. Uh, and then I uh, use this uh, I had. That I had the, the thirty two years uh, the climate the climate data and uh, I uh, uh, I took the average temperature of the October March of each year and I used this data as a training data for the negative exponential curve to uh, x then I did the reconstruction of climate where I used the the just negative exponential uh, curve and uh. I use this uh, the training data uh, then to e extrapolate this data for the 445 years. Uh, that was the maximum uh, the tree growth period that I had. And also um, this climate reconstruction, you can see the, there is a for five, 52 years period from uh, 1622 1628 to uh, something like uh, six, uh, 60, 80, and it was like a uh, very, uh, it was like a small ice age uh, period, and also it's written in Europe and the, in Asian books that there was in this period something in, you know, six, uh, six, in 16, 1016 a year, uh, 
there was like 30 year of uh, a very low temperature period. Uh, that's uh, to check uh, the quality of the to check the quality of the my recon reconstruction. I use the the instrumental data uh, and check it with the uh, data that I have reconstructed. The, the with the blue line uh, you see the reconstructed climate, and with the red you see the uh, instrumental data from the stations. And uh, this is also the final result. This is the climate climate reconstruction. Uh, that's just a smooth by ten years uh, moving uh, window, and uh, you also can see easily that this fifty two years uh, very uh, half for reducing temperature. And uh, yes, as a result uh, of my uh, the small research, it showed that the the dendrochronology has the uh, good potential uh, for for the Georgia, and uh, yeah, it's uh, important to do more studies according to obtaining dendrochronology. It will so um, as a result, we got uh, for 40, 450 years old uh, master chronology that can be used to. Uh, uh, for uh, cross validation with other chronology, other chronologies, uh, it was uh, also it was determined that the yeah the October March uh, the average temperature average temperature is a uh, it's a temperature of the winter period or the period when it's a cold it's uh, it influences the most uh, the tree growth uh, during uh, during the year. Uh, and also the yeah we figure out this fifty two years the um, fifty two years like a small ice age for the Caucasus, but yeah it's uh, it's not a big study and it needs to be more research. Uh, this the is the endocrinology is quite a uh, new things for our for my country. There is only few studies uh, in. In, in this in this field of uh, research and uh, the recommendations for there would be to uh, yeah to do of course the more more research also the very interesting part is that uh, we have very eastern part of Georgia is the border of Azerbaijan we have the um, Pistacia multicatris and uh, Juniperus uh, the five species of the Juniperus where where they are living uh, in ex very extreme conditions there is the precipitation almost same like in desert, like a 300, 250 precipitation and uh, they are very slow, slow growing and uh, that would be nice to you know, do some research on it. And it's for the movement and thank you. Uh, okay. It was all. <laughs> Thanks I was a lot. quite frustrated. It's really almost three days I'm living in the car repair shop. <laughs> but you made it. We're happy. <laughs> We're here. It's your presentation. So uh, at least this part you you didn't miss. Okay. Thanks a lot, Jason. That was uh, very interesting. Um, I think we're gonna go to questions. Yes. As you already yes. asked for. <laughs> <laughs> this was almost the question. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Of course, please. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Now I can't see you, but uh, welcome again. It was a very long day for you. Thank you for the presentation again. And uh, I would like to ask that um, I couldn't be sure that if you use this uh, EPS values because your oldest chronology and uh, the reconstruction uh, has the same long, I that... think. And yes. the yeah. other question of mine is, uh, I couldn't see any um, 
cross-validation statistics uh, were which period was the verification, which period was the calibration for you? I'm not sure if the it passed the tests. Okay. Can can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can okay. You? Okay. Is it working at all? No. Okay. Um. Maybe I because I I'm not sure if Lizzie understood understood everything and the uh, there were some interruptions I think. Um. And maybe to um put some background on this. Um. Um. Lizzie did this study mostly all alone, <laughs> so there's no one working. Um. In Trochia in dendrochronology, they did have a small lab that they established for a forest inventory. But um, now there's actually no one working there on, um, on dendrochronology, dendroclimatology, especially. Um, so he did this mostly on his own. Um, so uh, yeah, we need to consider this when. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just I, I, I would like to uh, ask the questions because uh, if it would like to publish it. So yeah, uh, yeah because of that, just I would like to improve uh, his reconstruction. The questions are related with uh, this. Yeah, I will also that for judgment. <laughs> no. So, um, Nesibe was asking for the EPS value. Okay. Did you calculate the oh, EPS? Okay. Oh, I did not do. Also, and also the this validation period, uh, the very problematic for me is the the instrumental uh, data is very short, and I cannot take the like validation data and the calibration data separately because I have only like a thirty five years of the period for the calibration. And yeah, I, I use the, the same period for the validation and the calibration. I I, I know that the, in, the, in the publication, it's not like this. And the... But uh, I, I can suggest another method for you. Maybe leave out a uh, method. You can use it just one year, leave out. Uh, if you search it, you can, you can find a good uh, statistic way if you use leave out, out method and try this to do again. And it can be publishable if if you uh, if your reconstruction passed the test like that. Mm -hmm. It might Thank also you. be worth to look at the crew data at the credit data because especially in the I mean your climate data terminated in 1992, mm -hmm. and I think for the last 30 years at least the crew data should be quite reliable also for this part of the world. Yeah. Maybe not before because there were not so many meteorological station data, but um, to extend it until the present, then I think that would be useful also. Thank you. So, I, don't know, yeah. I, I wanted to ask about the, the, the trending yeah. when you use the yeah. negative, the negative exponential. Um, I wish we could go back to and uh, Dario, I, I, I'm not sure if he used the second day trending and I, I couldn't be sure about that. All right. Did you use the second day trending? Did you use the second day trending? There uh, was two steps there. No. Uh, you only used the uh, negative exponential, huh? No, I also used the, uh, the cubic sign. Ah right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah this is uh, this is uh, because uh, I wondered uh, because of that because if you use more more uh, flexible curves like that, you also throw out the climate signals. This is not uh, only about the um, competition. This is this can be a climate uh, low frequency in it in your time series because of that. First day trending or negative negative exponential or regional curve anyway can be enough. Other uh, otherwise you will have a very very high frequencies shaking like that. You, you you don't need to do the second day trending or cubic spline very well. You have very well fit cubic splines in second day trending like that. Second in your second way. Maybe that's not right what I did, but uh, I did uh, the two the trending, one with a negative exponential curve and one with a cubic spline. And um, then uh, for the reconstruction, I choose the negative exponential uh, curve because just it showed the higher uh, air value. And, great. Uh, okay. Okay. Great. Yeah, I'm not so sure I agree with Nesibe. <laughs> uh, sorry? <laughs> Can I disagree with you? 
Why? Because I think that there's so much low frequency due to disturbances in those forests that preserving too much low frequency there. But uh, this is very flexible one. No, no, this, I think what it's showing down here, it's the, the ring width index after the negative exponential detrending. No, this is second detrending. This is the cubic spleen, the red one. No, no, no, this is the the the spline, uh, spline on the... Not showing I have no idea. <laughs> it's just not. Do you see it in the computer? No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there. Okay. So I think the one on the bottom is already the index. Yes. Oh, okay. The, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understood that there, there is another spline like that. No, no, it just started how Arthur shows it. Yeah. That's how Arthur shows the, and you see, I mean, it will be interesting to see all the samples together after you detrain with negative exponential and see the, the, the, so actually before going on to the reconstruction, doing some kind of disturbance analysis on the samples. Maybe I'm looking more from the dendroecological point of view, okay. but I think it'll be more, it will be really interesting to have the, First, a disturbance uh, detection to see if there are uh, periods of strong disturbance, mm -hmm. and see if that could affect the um, actual the, the indices that you are getting from this stiff detrending, because all that low frequency there surely is not climatic. Part of it might be climatic, but it's uh, it's. I mean, it's not easy uh, time series to work with, that's for sure. It's really hard. And that's why Ed Cook developed uh, the spline, the cubic spline for detraining all these kind of uh, series that are pretty hard to work with. Um, okay, Dario, uh, the second one, uh, the indices he got, but uh, shows the low, low frequency in it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is my misunderstood because ah, I, thought, right, right. I thought that the curve uh, goes like that. that for no, the no, no, no. Just, the, just, just the low frequency shown by Arston to have a. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. I see now. I see yeah. now. Uh, do you remember if these uh, ups and downs, these low frequencies, are synchronous in your trees? Um, Yes, in many, many trees, in many, many samples. In many samples, that's really interesting. Uh, maybe later also I can show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the samples together. It'd be really nice to see to see that because there's so much information here. Mm -hmm. The problem is how to separate different pieces. What's ecology? What's mm -hmm. climate? And what is the uh, age distribution of your samples? Oh, uh, like hey, all all this one is a uh, uh, four hundred forty five years old, and most of them are around like two hundred two hundred fifty, and uh, a few of them are uh, like hey, um, very young. They are not also the young trees. They are just the uh, they are just with a big hollow inside, and yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. I like eighty one hundred. But the all, the trees they look same and they have the same size. I I think they are more or the less the from the same period. Because it's also the this tent, it's very special and uh, unique. They, it's written that it's only remaining natural uh, taxus bakata tree stand that's mm -hmm. remaining in the in the world, and it's uh, uh, there are only old trees. You cannot find any young trees inside the forest. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, my, my other question is that uh, the you know you have the coffee results, but it is not easy to. Uh, cross state uh, yew trees, uh, Dario, you had also some problems with that. Uh, uh, especially when uh, I had the good quality of the samples, uh, they were cross dating easily. I had like right. a 0 0.8, 0 0.7 correlations with good quality of the samples, but the mm -hmm. most of the samples were quite damaged because of their very old trees. They had a lot of cracks and missing parts mm -hmm. inside. So for climate, uh, analysis, maybe you can remove the low quality samples. If you have enough replication, 
with the yes also with the we good can, we can get much more samples and also we can get the samples from the higher elevation the, there is the possibility to do that yeah yeah yeah Great, great job. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. Uh, there, there are much more trees you can, uh... and then call more trees for sure yeah yeah yeah increase replication especially because you have so many of these common uh, disturbances that if you have many more trees they will uh delete each other yes, right they will robots, compensate robots, each other yes uh, so did you compare your data uh, with our uh, chronologies that we get uh, from Caucasus region? If there is any correlation, good correlations between them or not? Uh, there is the one uh, one study uh, in Az in Azerbaijan, uh, also on the Taxus Bakata, and uh, there is written that, and all, there is also the one uh, sample in internet, one uh, sample uh, from okay, from the Arizona. Yeah, Mister. Uh, he uploaded this sample in international trading data. It's 80, uh, 800 years old, um, the Taxus Bakata uh, tree there. And uh, in, in the study, the Azerbaijanian study, there is written that they have the same growth pattern. But yeah, there is no written the how much correlation and the... Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, Dario, we can... We can um... Check all with the, all the other species too. Yeah, yeah, we can. I can send him to to yeah. see and try to uh, in, in Kofetsha, you can cross date with ours. I don't know if you will find because uh, well, this uh, winter temperature signal it's rather common in in conifers, but since this is from the northern Caucasus, but it will be really interesting to check for sure. The spruce that you showed had a February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've, no. It's super common in, in, in conifers. But it's surprising for these really you know, wet sites in the Caucasus to have that. I think it's a really cool signal. Yeah, thank you. It was right. really nice. Thank you, thank you right. for your time. Thanks, Lizzie, for presenting. Thank you. Um, so I can check the time and I think we can, yeah, move on to the next speaker, to the last speaker, in fact. And this is uh, Rupas Diyan. Who is now working together with me in uh, since one month, basically. <laughs> um, and you will introduce your the data set and everything yourself, right? Yeah. So I don't need to say anything else. Um, yeah. wait <laughs> okay. till we have it up. Uh, full screen mode. Great. It's already okay, so maybe I say something about the background as long as the slides are not up. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep talking. Um, keep talking. <laughs> so, um, uh, Rupes will present some preliminary results that we got from uh, blue intensity measurements from samples that um, Nesibe, Dario, and um, I don't know who else, Mehmet, Mehmet. Kutai, and so on. <laughs> it doesn't work. Oh. <laughs> um, that you collected here in the um, Lesser Caucasus, um, just at the border between Turkey and, and Georgia. Um, and we were interested in seeing whether there's a good climate signal that might be uh, valuable for a climate reconstruction in these samples. And Supporting. yeah, we did some preliminary tests and Rufus is now showing you the results. So thank you, Professor Sinaita. So again, very good afternoon to all of you. So today I'm going to present some preliminary analysis on Bloom intensity reveals temperature of you. the lesser focuses. So, it's, it's, ah, yeah, you can press here if you want. Yeah. Oh, that's what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need to plug this oh. in. 
Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So as you all know that about the Cossack Caucasus region, that is very global, it is one of the global biodiversity hotspot and provide a lot of eco ecological services to the downstream communities and there are many more. So, but on the other hand, I'm just showing here the, the climate projection for the Turkey region, Eastern Turkey. So, a report says that the summer season witnessed the largest temperature increase over the Turkey region and it is increased by uh, 1.5 degree during the observation period uh, 1962 uh, around 2000 onwards. So, in this contest, all right. So I think you all know about this uh, study that uh, already have been done by Professor Dario. They uh, already developed a good uh, network of peering uh, chronology from the uh, Caucasus region. So if you see uh, the results from their study and if you uh, look at the pre growth climate response, so the red highlighted one uh, the response that uh, mostly uh, from the uh, mostly are the temperature signal, and this is the uh, the contest where we are going to start that uh, there is a uh, temperature signal in the in uh, some sites of the uh, region. So try try now. Oh, now it's working. So let us come to the, because uh, all of the presenters already described about the tree ring uh, width. And the, now I'm just uh, want to describe the blue intensity, which is basically a new, uh, not new measurement, but we, it is a basically alternate of maximum late wood density. And so basically maximum late wood density is basically reflects the uh, content of uh, lignin in the late wood cells. And it's basically uh, lignin is basically uh, uh, <clears throat> controlled by the uh, summer temperature. And if we talk, talk about the uh, <clears throat> some warmer, uh, if you talk about the increase in summer temperature, so the warmer summer increase temperature increases the uh, lignin contained in the cells that leads to increase the uh, uh, denser and uh, darker cells. And so earlier studies basically provided overview of a uh, maximum late food density based on uh, uh, X-ray images. And this is basically reasonable proxies for the summer temperature. And Recent studies indicated that uh, the uh, light reflected from the uh, wood density is basically in the uh, blue, do blue domain of the light spectrum is the similar proxies uh, as to the uh, maximum density. So we can just uh, clearly uh, uh, see here that uh, we can easily see the blues in the late wood uh, wall cells. So in this and uh, in the recent past, you can also say that this is the very promising proxies for the summer temperature over the past uh, thousand of years, even I think. So also, if you talk about the network of uh, training chronology from the Caucasus region, so there are already uh, developed the network uh, by the uh, Professor Dario. And if you see the some sites like uh, this last one, Doglava, they already uh, reconstruct uh, temperature based on blue intensity network. So this is basically a safe file of the global biodiversity hotspot. So I just uh, accepted the Caucasus region and there is some uh, problem in the safe file. I'm sorry for that. Yeah. No. You want to change to uh, PowerPoint or we continue like this? Yeah, it's open. All right. Yeah. So these are the some major climatic reconstruction that already have been uh, done from the Black Sea region and some of uh, the precipitation reconstruction mostly. 
And if you talk about the temperature reconstruction from the region, so if you will see some very few studies that uh, uh, which are on the temperature reconstruction. So basically, mostly study the ring width parameter. One study is uh, the stable isotope, and there is only one study that uses blue intensity from the higher Caucasus region of the Russia. So. If you talk about the overall studies, so there are some few, there are some gaps about the temperature reconstruction using uh, blue intensity. And so if you talk about the temperature rec reconstruction from the region, which are only two in number. So there is one reconstruction by Dobla. Uh, Dolboa, which is based on the blue intensity reconstruction. So it is like a good uh, reconstruction developed by uh, Doglaba. And if you talk about the uh, reconstruction from the Caucasus region of the Russia, so it is uh, not that much long in the uh, time period. So there is still uh, greater scope to develop such uh, blue intensity uh, based temperature reconstruction from the region. And still, we do not have uh, uh, the temperature reconstruction to uh, uh, compare the uh, blue intensity reconstruction uh, by the Dolgova. So it is maybe, so to check it is whether it's a local signal or regional signal, we need more uh, denser uh, blue intensity chronologies from the region. Oh. oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, oh. damn. Wait, I will. We'll switch yeah, to uh, to PowerPoint and see if we can do any better. Sorry about that. What are you? Ah, oh, why is that? Ah, oh. oh, my goodness. Why? Why are you doing this to us? There's nothing else I can do here. No, don't you have to do that? Can you change it in PowerPoint? Like not being in the presenter mode? But, but I'm just. So, what is it? The view. Light show. Is it? Stay. Can you open it like this? Can't you click on it? Oh, okay. Then I'll just. My user. <laughs> well, I was not going to say anything. Apparently, I'm not either because. <laughs> Same thing. And can you press now? Oh, your slideshow here. Now. All right. Still, yeah. All right. Sorry about that. So basically, uh, so we have to use data from the site. Uh, DMH and species minus silvestri from the dairy at all. And there are total 40 samples in uh, the data. And we only uh, collected on, we only use some few samples like 20 to uh, for the blue intensity reconstruction. And we talk about the temperatures. So these are the absolute values from the two data. And this is the raw ring width chronology for uh, from the uh, Dario. Okay. So 
So we have applied different retrending method to the blue intensity chronology. So if you see the first one, it is basically signal free approach using a age dependent spline. And second one is signal free approach with the spline filter. And if we talk about the next one, that purple one it is age dependent spline alone. And the next one, blue one is the spline alone. And the next one is the empirical mode uh, decomposition. And if you see about the last one, this is the all the uh, spline filter for the 32 pairs. So if we talk about the, the detending methods, so, so uh, to keep in mind that it preserve both high and low frequency signal. So we uh, have chosen the uh, first one, signal free approach for each dependent spline. And because it preserve both mostly uh, low and high frequency signal. And the EPS reaches up to the uh, 1726 and all the chronologies having good quality chronological statistics. I'll try. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> so we have coordinated uh, the blue intensity chronology is developed from different methods with the uh, true climate data. So if you see about the blue intensity versus uh, climate relationship, so there is a strong relationship from the June to September. There is always, uh, there is uh, uh, also the signal from the, Feb from the February, but we have chosen the, the most the strongest signal for the reconstruction of the climate. And the uh, the period chosen for uh, the pre-growth climate relationships during 1950. I can, so I can do it. I can. I think it's yeah. So I followed uh, regression approach for reconstruction of the flight uh, climate. So this is the reconstruction uh, till 1726. And for the calibration and verification, uh, we have followed. Uh, the sequential calibration verification of approach and 32 years for the calibration and then the remaining one for the validation period. And if you talk about the actual and reconstructed uh, temperature data, so there is, there is a well agreement between them, which I explained mostly 48.35% variance over the calibration period. And if you talk about the uh, statistics so they are well within the range of the the calibration and verification period and based on the uh, reconstruction we also found some extreme warm and cold air and if you look at about the, the 18th century is, there are some warm period and if you talk about the, some extreme cold air so there are always uh, there is some cold period during the 18th century, but uh, it is like uh, if you talk uh, about the uh, temperature during the recent past two or three decades, so it's most pronounced uh, warming you can see here. And we have compared the reconstruction from uh, other summer, summer temperature reconstruction from the region, Europe, basically European region that already have been developed by different uh, researchers. So they have, uh, the first one is the reconstruction done by uh, using the uh, blue intensity data. And if you talk about the different reconstruction, so there is uh, this good agreement with high frequency signal, but not, not uh, that much. And we see the figure on the right, there is a good regional scale coherence with uh, two climate data over the uh, region at a regional scale. So finally, we also check the frequency domain uh, into using the web weblet and spectral analysis. So uh, we can see if uh, the weblet uh, plot, so we can see that there is uh, interannual uh, frequencies two to four year and also multidecadal frequency around 64 to uh, 128 year. And also try to link with the uh, sea surface temperatures. So if you look at the spatial correlation with 
reconstructed blue intensity data with uh, sea surface temperature. So there is some linkages over the uh, Atlantic Ocean and if you see the black sea region, so there are some also some linkages, but this need to be uh, yet to be explored. So, so this is all about the future outlook because we only have uh, one trading blue intensity based trading chronology. So there is need to develop more temperature sensitive chronology using uh, blue intensity data. And also there is need to develop, uh, there are the other parameters such as uh, maximum rate food density from the region, which may provide a uh, reliable proxy for the uh, Cau Caucasus mountain region. So thank you very much for your kind attention. And I would like to thank first uh, Professor Sinaida, it provide me uh, opportunity to work in the data from the Caucasus region. I also like to thank Professor uh, Dario and Professor Maynard, in which uh, they, I think, I have worked on uh, their data, and it is also my pleasure to work to hear that uh, we have all the people uh, that I read literature about the Caucasus, and I also. Thanks, uh, the director of the University of Koch, Edwin. So thank you very much. All right, thank you, Rufus. Um, a lot of input facts, a lot of interesting figures. Um, are there any questions? No, okay. I will start with one, then you are. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, where do I start? Um, the, the initial chronology, um, did you compare it with the dreary width chronology that we have from the from the whole data set? That, uh, I understand what you said. Uh, we have uh, bigger, or the data set yeah, is actually yes, bigger, yes. Um, but from tree ring width. Yes. Did you compare the chronology from tree ring width with the two intensity chronology? Yes. And <laughs> and basically the uh, because this only took uh, twenty samples from the original ones, so because in the original ones the uh, age trend is more pronounced, but the after getting uh, some samples for the blue intensities, so maybe that age trend is not that pronounced in the beginning. And it is like uh, just few uh, this distortion in the trend due to some old only few old sample in the blue intensity one. At the um, you showed this raw chronology on the, one of the first slides. Uh, later. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is ah uh, this is ring width. Yes, this is ring width. Actually, because it says width. bi raw. Yeah, it's why mistake, but it is the original one. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of H trend there. And in the blue intensity data, there's not so much H trend. Yeah, if you see about the uh, blue intensities around from here, so this H, this trend is pronounced there, this one, and there is not so much H, H trend. Okay. But do you have that low frequency at the beginning of this year also in blue intensity? Yes, but uh, because uh, due to uh, the EPS, so we didn't use that part. The EPS didn't reach to that threshold, so we skip that one. Yeah, no, but but in developing a longer chronology, it will be interesting to remove whatever disturbance you have in that series, but leaving, of course, the low frequency due to climate. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if the blue intensity has exactly the same, or not exactly, but similar low frequency in that earlier yeah, yeah, they have the similar frequency because oh, right. because I have used the chronology since uh, from here, so around seventy twenty six for the blue intensity, and I just I can show you that. Again. So All right, it but before like, it was also similar. Yes, it was similar. Yes, that's really interesting. Yeah. What I found really interesting um, are the results about the detrending. I was super scared from mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah different detrends. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is really um, 
especially because you wouldn't expect so much impact from age trends in flow intensity data in general. But then these um, these different detraining methods look so different that is really uh, scary, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we talked about that, but I think maybe you didn't do this because it was just before we left. Um, yeah. Did you do the regional yeah. curve, the age aligned, um, uh, the, the plot where you do an age alignment with the samples yeah. to show the, the age trend? But, yeah, we tried that, but it is like super, not that much uh, good. <laughs> not that much but <laughs> <laughs> so there is not much age trend you mean yes yes okay you'll have more wood now no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for a hundred trees okay i have a question yes well, somebody must uh, translate okay <laughs> you can try in english no i don't know how I can. Right. yes you can. i mean try I mean, uh, they can help you you have some graphic Mm. Extreme warm uh, and, and mm -hmm. cold, year. cold. This one, yeah. Temperature, temperature, yeah. Um, extreme cold years, uh, 1953, <laughs> After that, we we don't see extreme cold years. After 57? After 1967. Okay, yeah. We don't see extreme cold years. Yeah. Uh, I'm asking you your opinion your opinion why because um when we say um climate climate change not uh warm only extreme uh, cold years we will see no I can't say it I mean extreme sejaktar olunca extreme soğukluklarında olacağı öngörülüyor ve iklim değişiklikleri birlikte Hani hmm. öngörüye göre hani hiç kış ekstrem bir e, soğuk görülmemiş ya bunu da, yani nedeni kendici nasıl uh, açıklayabilir uh, ne diyebilir buna? Uh, but this uh, data from the annual uh, mean temperature. No And this is she, she, no this is June July August September. Ah uh, only the summer only also yes. September. Ah yeah I I I I see. She asked the people I call it the uh, word exit or wait. Uh, we can see uh, external warrior and cold, but she asked why we don't see any cold uh, in here. We say because of only use. Uh, Summer temperature, so hot. Uh, yeah. Um, so, what are you saying? Yeah, what is uh, on your name? You're saying, yeah, I, I, can, can I ask, uh, explain uh, Turkish to her? Sure, sure, if she were young, Kresel is in Mada. Özellikle etkili olan e, gece sıcaklıklar oldu. Şimdi biz bu şeyleri seçtik. Gerçi burada dört ayın ortalaması ama o eksen soğuk yılları da aslında onu örtüyor. Yani ne demek aslında küresel ısınmaya katkı sağlayan şu anda daha çok gece sıcaklıkları. Yani yapılan çalışmalar. Hı -hı. Yani bir ülke makara göndermiş size. E, gece sıcakları arttığı için aslında şeyde ekstrem soğukları da göremeyiz ama bu tabi o veri vermiyor o onu Aa, kapatıyor ben onu oraya o, evet, oraya kapatıyor uh, she thinking about the, the, the graphics it's not just only uh, July to June, June to September she's thinking about it's, it's 12 months of in the year okay. and so she asked why why uh, we can't see, we can't see the, 
the extreme cold period after the 1967. Okay, did you have extreme cold winters after yeah. that? Yeah, okay, but this is just June to September. Yes, yeah, that's it. Yeah, this is um, so we only or we mostly okay, apart from Wesley, but all other dendrometologists. <laughs> no, we mostly work with the summer season because this is when the trees are mostly uh, photosynthesizing. So um, we ma mainly get the summer signal, exactly. Um, and that's why we, I mean, it would be nice to have an annual reconstruction, but we normally don't get there because the trees are focused on one single season. Uh, there is there was a question I think from the chat. Somebody had a question from the chat. Somebody raised a hand, I think. Yeah, Mehmet Bay raised the hand. Yes. So you can go ahead and ask your question. Uh, Mehmet Bey, sorunuzu sorabilirsiniz. Bir dakika. Ha, merhaba da Nesip Hocam. Uh, merhaba. Uh, uh, I want to say that, that welcome to everybody, uh, first of all, uh, as a vice dean of the forestry faculty. I was in and out thought about that because I was in the past, but I'm coming back in. So couldn't uh, talk about every part of the, the presentations. Uh, I was wondering, this study was uh, carried out in the eastern part of the Turkey, right? So can the author show the exactly where those stems are located so that I can figure out the, if they are kind of, you know, overlapping with my study. Uh, this is the exact the same time frame. Uh, I took the samples uh, in, in 2014. And uh, as you remember, Nancy Bojum, I sent it to you. So you are actually which, which uh hang, hangi uh, which samples Mehmet Paşa? Şu andaki ekrandakiler. Evet. Map with the uh, is, is, is, is, is in Turkey the Alondo söylendi değil mi? Tam olarak nerede olduğunu sormak istiyorum. Uh, uh, bunlar uh, şeyden eee Şaf Şaf Şaf Şaf'tan hocam. Yes. Şaf Şaf'tan. Hıh. Tamam. Eee very very close oh. to Meydancık. Meydancık bölgesinden. Evet. Meydancık bölgesinde. Yeah. Yeah. Or, ama orada orada temperaturelar yüksektir. Şey değildir o kadar düşük değil mesela. Orada 400 falan gördüm ben. Orada daha yüksek. Yusuf Eli de mesela ben Yusuf Eli'den aldım. E, temperaturelar hani diyelim ki 300 400 falandı. 500'e de çıkıyordu ama. E, 500 derken ne dediğinizi tam anlayamadım. 500 millimeter per precipitation diyorsunuz. Hı uh hı. -huh. Okay. Yıllık bu. Okay. Uh, dolayısıyla şey e, hani şey trendleri oradaki şeyleri birbirine çok benziyorlar. Dolayısıyla hani daha detaylı olarak incelemek isterim e, bu arkadaşın çalışmasını. Uh, uh, Mehmet hocam uh, uh, uh, sorry uh, I would like to explain in Turkish uh, sorry about that um, Mehmet Hocam bu başlangıç e, aşamasında bir çalışma ama buradaki örnek miktarını bu gidişimizde arttırmış olduk. E, ve biraz daha gelişecek rekonstrüksiyon. On, <gülüyor> o şekilde e, publish olacak. Ama onun dışında bir e, şeyiniz olursa, sorunuz olursa buradaki sıcaklık ve yağışlarla ilgili onları cevaplayabiliriz. Ya, şu anda şey... E müsait bir ortamda değilim. O bakımdan Hı. çok da iyi de takip edemedim şeyi e, arkadaşları. E, dolayısıyla hani belki e, zaten söylemiştir. Ben söylediği şeyi bir daha sormaktan da çekiniyorum biraz. O bakımdan e, ya, ya, sorabilirsiniz. Rahat olun. 3-5 kişiyiz burada zaten. Yani çok kapalı ve küçük bir grup. İstediğiniz tamam. şekilde konuşabilirsiniz. Tamam. Şeyi 30 tane sample aldığını söylediniz değil mi? Buradan Şap şap peki meydancık tarafından. Uh, what was the number of the samples uh, here? 15 trees and 30 core or? For the blue intensity. For 20, blue intensity. 20 samples. 20 samples. 20 samples. 20 samples. 20 samples. 
Şey Fordy, Fordy. Tamam gördüm onları. Okey. Tamam. Şey. Açtı tamam. Okay, so would it, would it be possible to send the exact location of the the sample points because I already picked up some stuff over there too? Oh, uh, I think we didn't get the question. Sorry. Şey, hani enleme boylum var ya. Enlem boylamış burada şey olarak gelmiş. Hani tam loka lokasyonu sağlamak için en az. Birbirinden sonra altı tane şey e, decimal degree bakımından dici olması gerekiyor. Hı hı. Yani onları paylaşabilirse e, oradaki şeyleri de yani benim yaptığımızla bunların yaptığıyla arasındaki şeyleri de karşılaştırma bakımından. Yani sizin yaptığınız şeylerle mesafe, karşılaştırma Mesafe açısından yarışıyor. Mesafe açısından aynen. Hı hı. Okay. Okay. Uh, he asked exact location of the samples because he has another research uh, from that area and he would like to compare uh, the, the, the, the measured uh, area between two sampling area, uh, how far each other, and uh, he would like to use, I think, uh, these results later. What is, what is, what is his sample site? Uh, the sample site is the Karada, the, the black, Mm, mountain in in Yusuf Ali. Ah, in Yusuf Ali. All right. Mm, not so close, far. Yeah. Close to Hatila then. Yeah, bit farther. Uh, farther. farther. It, it is. It is farther. Is uh, is is about kind of you know the two two thousand meters in okay. height okay. elevation. Is it is it is it the Scotch pine pine Silvestris? Scott, yeah, it's, it's the Scotch pine. Yeah. All right, and the uh, the age of the trees. Do you know how long the chronology is? Uh, the chronology, I got the two fifty nine something around that. Uh, I forgot the exact numbers. All right. So I can talk to you and then you know discuss the, if they are similarities between yeah, and how they are affecting each other. Yeah. The, yeah, the area the area I sampled is is very drought. It's kind of uh, minimum, you know, the, the minimum of the rain, and uh, any little rain can kind of, you know, add a, a ring to the, to the trees. So it's mostly drought sensitive. Exactly, exactly. So the the one that you just picked up is kind of you know, a little bit uh, better. So if you can get the that signals, if I can get the same signals, so I want to kind of compare if the signals are overlapping. Uh, Mehmet, Mehmet uh, Hocam, you can also compare your signals with uh, our previous publication, uh, that one. Uh, yeah. We have uh, Pinus uh, Silvestris chronologies here a lot. Uh, from uh, I think from Georgia and Turkey both. Mm -hmm. And you can see all all the signals here, uh, okay. and the distribution of the sampling uh, sites, and you can easily compare the signals uh, from your sites and ours. Okay, okay. So I'll. Uh, this is, this is the published one. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Later for this one. Uh, uh, I believe that the Nesekojum, you are familiar with this study, right? Because you are under your supervision. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay, Mehmet Hocam. I, I, okay. Uh, <laughs> we will, so, we will talk later again, but because sometimes I forget, uh, because yeah. I have a lot of questions around, you know? So, well, so all right. we, we can check together later. Okay. Okay, then. Uh, sorry about, uh, I have to leave now. So I have I I wanna uh, say good luck to everybody and uh, have a nice and enjoy the art and the weather. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Mehmet, for joining us. Um, and maybe Anytime. maybe if you are in contact with Mehmet, you can also uh, put us CC. Maybe um, if you have some further discussions, uh, it might be interesting also for us. Sure. All right. sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for your hospitality, Mehmet Hocam. Okay, bye-bye now. Bye. All right.
So, are there any further questions to Rupes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we go, we're here, we got coffee so far. So, so uh, I think to first to compliment that the uh, temperature signal is much better than previous studies. I think it's an improvement, right? Yeah. And uh, I think you're getting really good high frequency and low frequency. Although it seems to be, I don't want to talk about divergence, but here it looks really super strong and here it loses, I don't know. Uh, so you say but it's- But it's also less variable. And yeah. It's always more difficult to catch it correctly when it's less variable. Okay. So you say R square here, it's uh, 0 0.48 or something like that? No. Yeah, it's, yeah. Wow, because it looks like really stronger. I mean, when you're looking at the figure, but I mean, yeah, you have the, the numbers. So, and something I want to say is, th so this is, this would be the end of the little ice age, right? This, would this trend, this increasing temperature here be considered? Or is it just, uh, do you think it could be an artifact of some like low frequency being lost before you have a good replication or how do you? Yeah, maybe because, only we have 20 samples and the longer one is also only few so maybe if uh, we increase the number of samples so the, the frequency higher frequency maybe it would be much nicer after that but i'm not sure about that no but it looks um Uh, so if we compare to other studies, I mean, it's maybe a bit too early to do that because yeah. we still have don't have uh, so many samples in the data set and so on. But um, the second one, the yellow one, it's from Crees, and they have this relatively big data set. And also not really super cold little ice age conditions, which is... I'm not saying that there was no little ice age because we have the glacial data, which do say that there was a little ice age um, in Caucasus, but um, maybe not as pronounced. I don't know. All right. But yeah, we we got to wait and see what we will get from the 80 plus trees that we caught yesterday and oh. the day before. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm pretty sure that I mean, replication will be much better and all your results will improve. I mean, they're already pretty good. So I think. And, uh, uh, I would like to also say that I just tried to compare uh, with my uh, with our um, temperature reconstruction and your reconstruction uh, year by year, and warm events very well fit each other, but not cold events. This events. oh really? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Warm events uh, very well fit. Uh, I I if I am not wrong, I just really fast. Uh, comparison I have, but and so the maturation data also very compared with this. Hmm? Maturation data also actually is uh, very compared with this, uh, data. Where we I'm not, got uh, uh, sorry, I am not sure if you check that uh, uh, your reconstruction. Uh, did you get warm events better than cold events in your reconstructions? Uh, did you did you check this information also in your reconstruction? We didn't check the earlier literature yet because this is just preliminary um, analysis. So, so I think for for the um temperature for the period of overlap, um, we didn't check it. But, but when I looked at the extreme cold and warm years. I'm not so sure about, or I'm not, I'm not familiar with typical warm years, but um, the extreme cold years, there are a couple of typical volcanic events like the Tambora and in the 1830s, uh, 1783. So this actually fits quite well with what I would expect. For the warm years, I can't really say too much, to be honest. Uh, maybe we could check uh, an Nino record or something like this. Uh, but yeah, I guess it's too early to, for, to, to, yeah. to do this. But um, yeah, I was actually happy with the cold years. <laughs> okay, but because of the, maybe because of the region, maybe because of the methods, but 
uh, your method is more strong more stronger than which I use because I took very large area, very large data set, and uh, it it uh, the bot fits in uh, terms of warm years uh, bot reconstructions. But I couldn't check exactly extreme cold years too. Uh, I will check them again. Maybe the, the last reconstruction after that all uh, you uh, get from these samples, maybe we can compare again year by year. Um, yes, we should definitely do that. I actually think that, um, I think your reconstruction is triggering with threat. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of that, so your method is more stronger than mine. Yeah, maybe, but your data set is probably stronger. Um, but yeah, it might be something physiological that is. Um, yeah, be, because the area are different too, you know. What is, what uh, is your data from, Nesibe? Uh, sorry? What is your data from? Uh, actually, uh, my data is from the three rings at the higher elevations. But uh, maybe you you remember when I visit to. Um, us uh, at cook's laboratory you weren't there at that time yeah. and uh, which i uh, which type of method i used you know it, it is not easy to reconstruct uh, from two rings because uh, at the western part of turkey because they mostly affected by precipitation or drought limitation in summertime but i can also recognize that there is a high <clears throat> signals at the beginning of the vegetation period, uh, very good positive signals I get, but uh, these trees uh, have both signals, precipitation drought uh, signals in summertime and at the beginning of the uh, uh, vegetation period, uh, temperature signal. After that, I checked and I, I thought that, you know, I, I just used a huge data set from higher elevations and uh, just take their principal components. I, I recognize that, for example, principal first principal component very well agreed uh, with the precipitation, but the, the others, uh, some of the others agreed with the temperature. And then I thought that this uh, principal component first can be, uh, cannot be signal for temperature this is noise for te for temperature effect. I just threw out that and I used the, the other principal components, which are the very well, uh, which have the very well uh, good correlation with temperature. And I asked, uh, this was the crazy idea, you know, and I asked as it could, uh, it can be possible to make this type of reconstructions. And uh, he tried again he, on his computer and he told me there were to a statistician, um, you have to mention that that you can use the other principal components for uh, uh, have less uh, eigenvalue uh, represented by uh, less eigenvalues. It can be possible to, to to do this type of reconstructions, but nobody will believe you. So. Uh, five years, uh, they reject all my reconstruction, and then uh, together with Joel Guo, we improved the reconstruction and uh, used a different type of uh, methodology, similar type of methodology, but using the uh, similar principal component. Uh, the idea was that just leave a uh, principal component first and second, which are related mostly precipitation, and then use just the temperature signals from the other uh, principal component. But in this case, you need more and more data from different areas. And also, uh, which is very important, temperature has a um, normal distribution, not, for example, precipitation like that. Because of that, you can make, a, a, you can create a mean for a big grid. Uh, I use all this, uh, the idea, and uh, finally it's published. Uh, uh, because of that, I was wondering if I have found a good reconstruction uh, from the same area, and I would like to compare my, my reconstruction to the others. This is another statistical, this was another statistical issue for me. Uh, and now I can see that warm events fits very well. Uh, 
uh, but the idea was different. Nobody used this type of idea before uh, to read. Lose you? He was lose you already. Ah, uh, sorry. What happened? Hello, Nessica? Hello, Dario. I can hear you. Dario, seni duyabiliyorum. Alper, ben Dario'yu duyabiliyorum ama Dario beni duyamıyor. İstersen telefonun sesini aç. Tamam. Böyle devam edelim. Çünkü şey tekrar kontak kurmak çok anlamlı değil. <gülüyor> Why are you laughing at? We are, we are using all these applications. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> yeah. Yeah, no, sending messages. <gülüyor> <laughs> oh no, yeah, this was good joke. Yeah, that that was the idea. I think you you hear something about that. So I'm really happy to find the good reconstruction because the other reconstructions uh, from this uh, German guy I cannot uh, tell the surname. Uh, his R values are very low because of that. I don't trust this reconstruction much, you know, from juniper trees you, you showed. So uh, this will be very nice to compare the idea, my idea also to which we, which published previously in that area. Uh, you mean the Texas Bacata reconstruction? No, no, no, no, no. From uh, uh, mostly Pinus Negra trees. Uh, this is this is from the western part. Of the western part of yeah, Turkey. Yeah, but... The the German guy not not Taxus Bacata. I remember that that was uh, Juniper trees. Uh, Ramsey's chronologies he used, and he used isotope analysis. Henrik or like that the surname. Uh, Ingo, Ingo. Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, don't trust this. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know, very big signal. <laughs> okay, good. Why is not working? I'm trying to. Okay, uh, uh, Lea, it was really nice uh, organization. Uh, why we didn't want to speak? Because we we we just. Um, a prediction about this connection problems and we thought that we, if we have a connection pro problem uh, the program will go on so uh, but uh, it was really nice thank you for your suggestion to organize this type of meeting and it was uh, oh so we can now you can hear Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah we, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, it was really nice uh, organization. Thank you so much for the idea, uh, Lea and uh, Artwin University. Thanks a lot. And yes, you. you are so tired, I know. <laughs> You I, have, thank you, because I actually only uh, had the idea and then I couldn't do anything else. And you did all the organization, you, Tunshai, and then the university here in Artvin. Um, so I was really, um, yeah, I was quite um, impressed about what you set up here. It was really very, a very nice environment. And I'm very honored that we could do our workshop here. Um, I think it was really a very, very good exchange. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, great to see you, uh, see all of you. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. we couldn't see here, but <laughs> yeah. there are still so other people in the room. <laughs> yeah, there's, I'm not going to touch a computer. I'm gonna, no, no, no, no, don't touch it. And, uh, th thank you so much, uh, Mehmet, 
you lead everything in the field and uh, you helped a lot. As usual. As usual, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I will just, um, because Rupert is still, still standing here waiting for questions, I will just um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> say thanks again, uh, uh, Rupert, for your um, preliminary, preliminary work on this. And I, will, I hope you have a lot of motivation to now continue with the actual study and with the actual data set um, the, um, to improve the data background um, for all this. I mean, now you have already... Um, done a lot of things and probably you just need to import the new data into what you've did already and then it's going to give you basically a whole paper in just a few clicks. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so thanks uh, Rupesh again and thanks also to the other presenters, um, Dario, Mehmet and Resi. Um, I think there are a lot of interesting and promising things we can we can do in this area and i'm very happy that i that i was sort of integrated in the existing <laughs> uh, work that you are doing i'm very grateful for that and i hope that we can contribute with some useful data and analysis in the future um yeah that's the idea. And um, we also hope to come back. So we now got a few sampling sites in um, Georgia. We also um, scouted some sites that are worth visiting again. So I hope to come uh, to Georgia and also to Turkey again, um, because we do not only want to have a temperature reconstruction from the Leicester Caucasus, but we actually want to have a dendrochronological network in Georgia. Um, uh, that might give us more temperature information um, on the regional scale and not only this single outstanding points somewhere in the <laughs> in the landscape. So um, yeah, we hope to work on this in the future. And I'm looking forward to collaborate with all of you. And maybe we even come back to Artwin University. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was such a nice place. And yeah. Thanks, everyone. Anybody else who wants to say anything summarizing? I just want to say that it was great being back here and doing more field work and chatting with all of you, uh, all people that I knew before and people that I didn't know before. So I think it's great that it keeps uh, growing. So the little group that was working in the Caucasus keeps, or in Turkey, but mostly in the Caucasus, uh, Turkey and Georgia and keeps growing and will get a lot of more things done. And I hope we also work on ecology too. I mean, climate is great, but <laughs> let's not forget it's ecology. Only half it's only half the story. Yeah, well, one third. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, the, the, the ecology, I think, is also great. So um, yeah, no, I think it's just really fun to work with you guys. So I'm really happy to be back. Thanks. All right. So then ah, I actually wanted to, hmm. okay, I don't know if we are still so many people. It doesn't look like. Oh, Tunchai is there. Hello, Tunchai. <laughs> didn't see you before. Um, I actually prepared one last slide, but it's going to be a mess to set this up on Dario's computer now, so I'm not going to do it. Um, <laughs> I wanted to have my contact details in case that anybody wants to contact me. Um, but I can leave it here at Artwin University and Nesibe, Tunsha, you all, you are already in contact with me, so yeah. um, it might not be too necessary to do that now. <laughs> um, up here, that's here, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, we are here. <laughs> okay, so I had this one last slide that said, said thanks everybody. Um, it was great that you were, that you were here. Um, I don't have that slide now, but um, I just do it orally. Um, so if you have any question or any suggestion, please feel free to contact um, to contact me. Um, I can also forward it to any of the other participants um, if you want to get in contact with Resi or with um, Dari or with Meh Mehmet. Um, I'm happy to um, establish a contact if you do not have it already, <laughs> which is quite likely. All right, um, then let's um, let's quit here. Um, thanks again, and looking forward to see you in the future. Okay, bye bye. Have a nice trip to your country. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Ciao. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.